The first thing I'd like to say is uh, you need to rely on those skills that you already have as a parent. Uh, many of the skills that we have as teachers um, uh, require the same kinds of skills that we use as parents working with our children. So rely on those skills that you already have as a parent to lead and to guide your children um, in their understanding. Um, another thing I would say to you is um, working with your children at home provides a wonderful opportunity uh, to provide in an educative experience, not just in what they know and understand and what they'll hear, um, the knowledge that they'll acquire, um, but you also have a wonderful opportunity to form their character. Um, with children working at home, um, they're working on these academic skills. Um, they're acquiring uh, uh, character virtues as well. One that jumps to my mind is, is uh, the virtue uh, of temperance or self-control or self-discipline. Working at home oftentimes um, requires those kinds of things. So it really is an opportunity for children to continue their education and to develop uh, the skills that they're learning at school. The last thing I'll say just in general is to relax. Um, you can do this. Um, you're not going to ruin your child in terms of education and in in terms of schooling. Just relax. Um, um, take a long-term view of their education. Schooling is one part of their education, but it's not everything when it comes to their education. So, so do your best, keep it simple, uh, provide for them what you can and help them out. Um, today I'm just going to give you a few uh, tips, recommendations uh, for helping your, your child or your children uh, to learn at home. Um, that will make the time more productive, more rewarding for you, um, but especially for your children. So let's get started. I have my tips here up on the board um, that should offer um, a little bit of advice for you. The first thing I'd like to point out is location. Uh, choose a location in your home that will allow uh, your child to get the most out of their experience. What this typically means is that uh, you need to identify uh, a location in your home that's well lit, um, uh, a place um, similar to you know, the desk that they might use at school. Um, so a kitchen table, uh, uh, a dining room table, a desk in a room um, would, be, would be a good idea. Make sure it's well lit, as I said, um, but more importantly and most importantly is make sure it's free of any kind of a distraction. Now, when, when we're thinking about a uh, any kind of a distraction, we often think about things like uh, the television being on or uh, videos uh, on a computer playing or some kind of music playing in the background or something like that. And that's absolutely the case. Uh, be mindful of that and, and uh, be careful um, that you haven't created your, your uh, study location in a place that's that's uh, distracting in those ways, but also be careful about conversations. Conversations um, that you have with your other children, conversation between, between uh, spouses or telephone conversations, those can be really distracting as well. Um, so uh, um, create that space, um, create it one that's free of, a, of, of any kind of a distraction so that um, students can concentrate on the work uh, that they have before them. Uh, the next thing is uh, to create a schedule. Um, it's a very good idea to schedule out the school day um, that would be similar to what um, a child would experience at school. Um, make sure uh, that you line things out with with uh, times, um, if students uh, get through a particular uh, subject um, at a particular time, um, allow them to move on to to uh, the next thing. Again, this will teach them, you know, the value of working hard and accomplishing, you know, their tasks so that they can move on to other things. Now, in creating a schedule, um, I highly recommend that you start with the subjects that are most challenging for your child. Um, oftentimes, early in the morning, um, after waking up and having a breakfast and having a little bit of time to wake up, 
Um, children are often fresh in the morning and they're able to tackle those things that are most challenging. The longer you wait in the day, um, as you wait a little bit longer, their energy wears out, they get tired. Um, and so again, tackle those, uh, those subjects, those areas that are most challenging for that particular child. It could be math, it could be reading, it could be language, it could be any of those. Just make sure that you try to tackle those things at the beginning. Another thing that I want to point out in terms of a schedule is make sure that you provide breaks for uh, your child. Even high school uh, students need breaks. I would recommend at least a five to 10 minutes um, of a break per hour. And that goes all the way up to high school. And as you go lower, um, you're gonna wanna do more breaks and more frequent breaks. The idea is this, if children are given the time uh, to step back and, to, uh, and uh, to stand up and to step away from their work and rejuvenate when they come, come back to their work, they'll be more uh, uh, refreshed um, and able to tackle everything that they need to tackle. Um, and what you'll discover is if you give those breaks periodically, even if they say, I I'm not ready for a break, have them stand up, stretch, whatever, because when they get back to their work, they'll, they'll be much more uh, able, to, able to focus on what, is, uh, what it is they have to do after that. Item number three is questions. Ask questions. Ask lots of questions throughout the day. Um, when you're at lunch, when you're at dinner time, when you're taking a break, ask a question even if you don't know the answer. Um, ask them to, to talk about what was the most interesting thing um, that you read in your history last hour? Um, what was the most important thing um, that you think? And don't be afraid to say, if, if you ask a question and your child says, I don't know, don't be afraid to say, I, I don't know either. Um, be willing to say, let's go and let's uh, find out together what that answer is. Or if you don't have time to go and look up the answer, uh, uh, ask your child to, to go and, and find the answer uh, and then come back and tell you um, what they think it is. Uh, number four on my list here is siblings. Um, it's a good idea to get older siblings involved. If there are older siblings um, in the household, um, call on them, ask them, invite them to participate um, in the education uh, uh, of a particular child. Um, um, as long as those old, older siblings are taking care of their own work, um, you can invite them in, um, ask them to help uh, uh, a younger sibling. It's a good idea for a lot of reasons. Um, if you're trying to explain something to your child and you know, you're not able to do it well, maybe uh, another child can come in and look at it um, through more childlike eyes um, and try to explain it to a younger, uh, uh, a younger member of the family. All right, the next item on the list is resources. Um, explore other resources beyond the curriculum that is provided by the school. Um, there's a lot of things out there uh, online, and of course you need to be careful as you look at those. Uh, you need to look at those and review them before your child is able to see them. You know, but explore those and use those um, uh, uh, to great effect. Um, use the program that your school has provided, whether that's an online platform or not. Um, use those um, to the extent that the school is asking you to use those, um, but don't be afraid to go beyond those. Um, one caution is that this is not the time to learn something complicated online. Um, make sure that if you're going to use it with your children that you have a relatively good understanding about how that resource works um, and that you can use it proficiently. Because if in doubt, if you don't know it um, very well, I would highly recommend that you put it off to the side because there, um, there are very few things that are as good um, as a good book and, and a paper and, and a pencil. Um, so you know, don't be distracted, don't be enticed, you know, by a, a particular program that you don't know very well and that it's actually going to take you time to learn and it's going to take you time to
to explain to your child, use what you already use to the greatest effect. And last but not least is read. If in doubt, read. Read, read, read. Um, if you're not comfortable with any other uh, you know, kinds of technology and you want to supplement, um, the fir your first option should be a good book. Look for books, uh, make books uh, available uh, to your children, um, provide them with access to great books. Uh, depending on the age, um, you want your child to be reading aloud. Um, in fact, this is a great way um, to get uh, actually family members involved um, with one another in terms of the education is have a, a younger child read aloud to an older child um, and read aloud to your own children. Uh, do it uh, um, in pairs, do it as a small group, um, or do it as an entire family. Um, reading aloud is kind of a lost art, um, and I would love to see that um, recaptured. And, and one of the places where we can see this uh, uh, happening again in America is in the home. So read aloud, make uh, uh, um, reading a part, uh, a large part um, of the academic day. In conclusion, I'll just say this. Um, you're going to be able to do a good job. Um, just trust in your instincts. Rely on your common sense. Most likely, um, the skills that you've already acquired as a parent are the skills that you're going to need in order to provide a quality education for your children.